Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on Star Atlas Marketplace. We've uh, covered this quite a bit recently. I think it's fascinating and there's a lot of people that are questioning and, and just a bit uns unsure and uncertain of how these, this works, specifically with regards to the bots. So I want to dive today a little bit deeper into the psychology of bots, how they operate, how they work, um, and, and just some things that you can do to uh, do some due diligence and some research and, and understand just hopefully from this video a little bit more about this. So at the moment, uh, we're back to our favorite R, Pierce C9, because I'm using this as an example. And exactly the same in the last video, if we, put in, if we put in an order, a buy order, the bot will just jump over the top of us. We know that's gonna happen, we understand that, okay. But what I'm interested in here is the sellers. So one of the things I talked about previously was uh, on Rogue Market, where you can come and you can see things like the Pierce C9 over the course of a year. And you can get some historical data, like here it was selling for 14,000, and here just today it sold for 3,120. But the problem with this is this is assuming it's real people, which we know it's not. We know that these are bot transactions, and there may be a real person uh, here and there sporadically, but overall, the majority of these transactions, and you can see this just simply from the fact that every day um, these transactions go through for the same value, um, and so what we're seeing here is these bots are actually trying to stimulate activity. Now, why would they do that? Why would a bot stimulate activity? Well, first of all, we have to understand, like, what is the purpose of the bot? Bots can do many, many different things. But in this instance, for a trading bot, it has one key objective, to make profit. That's it. It wants to make money. And it doesn't have to make money on a big trade. It doesn't have to make it all in one go. The way that bots operate successfully is they make um, volume on microtransactions. So they may make 10, 20, 50, 100 dollars per transaction, but they do that continuously. And that's really where the profit comes from on these bots. So in order for them to be able to operate, they really need uh, volume. Something which is significantly lacking in Star Atlas. There's not many buyers and there's not many sellers. The people that bought, bought ships very expensive and they don't want to sell them for a loss. And the people that are buying just aren't willing to put money in anymore. Every now and again, you'll get someone come along and drop some money into it. And that's really what the bots rely on. So all of this uh, simulated activity here is to make it appear like there's more activity so that you would look at this and go, oh, wow, look, yeah. So this is what they're worth because this is what other people are paying. But actually, these aren't other people. If we go back here and look at this, now, I, I might be wrong in this instance. This is um, a generalization. So please don't take these exact examples as this is true. But in general, in general, this is the principle. Uh, and if you look across, like, because, and the reason I say that is because this here, like, um, for example, this account here, YL7F, this could be a real account. Very possible this could be a real account. Um, I don't know, but it could be a bot. Because if you look at this one that's an order here for 732, and then you've got 732.01, maybe that's someone just trying to just be at the top, or maybe it's a bot just out, who knows? We, we know that this is a bot, because if I was to delete my order of $4,000, then we absolutely know that this uh, would disappear back down to 3,100. Okay, so we know this is a bot. But the question here is, is this seller a bot? And is this seller bot connected to this buyer bot? Are they playing each other to make the schmuck, the person, the, the one that wants to buy, are they, is, is this, is the purpose of this bot to drive me up closer to this bot to get me to buy this directly because I get frustrated with fighting this bot or I decide that this must be the value because this is the value. And what we sometimes see as well in other ships, and there's not one here, so I can't give you an example. Um, here's a good example. So we know Jazzo, this is a bot account. We know this is a bot account. We've tested it. BCCN. Now, I'm going to argue potentially that this is maybe a bot account. Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, it's been there for eight months. Possibly it's just someone that's left it. Who knows? But here's the thing. If this is a bot account and they have left it for this long, this simulates a potential floor of 2000. And then when you see a buyer at 3000, you go, wow, that person's willing to pay 3000. Wow, that's really good. But actually, 
what you find is both of these accounts are not real. And actually, the only person that's really willing to pay is only willing to pay $11. And this is just a troll bid. Um, but this is probably a real person. Um, the And these are probably all real people. Just, you know, hey, hi, YOLO, you know, I put in a dollar and if I get lucky, so be it. Um, whereas these, maybe these are real people, but th this one we know it's not. This one's guaranteed it's not. But this one as well, I would argue it might not be. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. So my point here being is that if I look at this from a psychological point of view, this is simulating a flaw. There's not one on here. Um, but this is now me simulating the floor and the bot saying, well, I'm going to go a little bit higher, trying to get me to go a bit higher. So if I take this order out and cancel this order, then this is going to drop back down to 3,100, 3,100. Okay. And so what we need to now know is what is this account? Is this a real person or not? We can actually click on this, click on the copy button. And from there, we can go across to something like soul scan and we can actually put this in. So if I go into soul scan right now, and I was to, um, in fact, one sec, let me just open up a new tab for SoulScan. Doesn't matter what I go to. Um, I'm just going to paste in this address here. Now, this address is going to, oh, I just want to go to SoulScan. I don't want to go to account or anything. Bear with me. Click on this. Okay. So this here is this account. This is this person. Okay. And this here is the asset. So this is the token address of the C9. Okay, so if I take the token address of the C9 and I go to the account and I go to the, and, and I can see where this has been inter interacting with, I can see all the transactions that this account has been working with. And one of the cool things about this is you can even um, export this if you want to, to like a CSV file. So if I click on SPL transfers, I can actually export this to CSV. I'm actually going to paste in here that token address. Now I can see what's happening here. Look, already we can see an hour ago. Um, if, if I look at this, this is probably from, uh, this is from a staking program. It says, uh, is it a score? It's, let me have a quick look, but it's, it's possibly going to be score or sage. Um, just says it's been staked. Okay. Normally it would tell you, but it doesn't tell you on there. So that's fine. But we can see that they were doing some stuff here two hours ago. So here we go. Um, if I look at this one, this is where it was added. Okay. And then we can see where it was removed. It was removed here. So we can we can kind of get an idea of what's going on with this C9. So if we click on this and have a look, uh, this is where it was added to the marketplace. So we know right now if we look at this, uh, what is interacted with the Star Atlas Marketplace program. All right, and again here, um, this was Sage. So interacted with Sage. So it was taken out of Sage and put on the market. All right, so we can see here if we go back, it was in Sage two hours ago. All right, so two hours ago, this was in Sage. It was doing some stuff in Sage. They took it out of Sage and uh, it was put onto the marketplace. Okay, so now let's have a look. Okay, because we've, uh, we've got this transaction. We can take this token ID. We can come to this account. We can paste this in here and press enter. And now it is only going to show us the history with the PSC9. Now, this isn't necessarily this C9. This could be any C9. It could be that they have multiple C9s. Maybe they're buying and selling them. But we can see what's happening here. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look at these. So when it left this wallet, where did it go a day ago? What happened to it? Well, a day ago, we can see that it went into Sage. Okay, cool. Well, we know that because it was taken out of Sage two hours ago. All right, so what happened five days ago? So again, we can have a look at five days ago. Where did it go five days ago? Because we know it come out of Sage. So this again, probably from score. Yeah. So this come from the score program. Okay. So basically what this account has done is five days ago, they took it out of score. They put it into Sage. It's been in Sage for a week and they're like, we're going to sell it. Okay. So then what happened here six months ago? So let's go back. So now we're starting to get a history here. So Star Atlas Marketplace program. Okay. So if this is what happened six months ago, then what's this transaction? All right. So this was the score program. So it looks like maybe they tried to list it six months ago, but then they decided against it. Maybe that's what this transaction is here. Oh, it says transfer. Yeah, because it was put onto the marketplace. Okay. So let's go back. This might be a different one. Maybe they have more than one. So let's have a look at these other two transactions, which are here. This was seven months ago. 
So it left the wallet to go here. This was the score program and it come back into the wallet from the marketplace. So transferred from the marketplace to this account. So, all right, so now we're starting to get an idea. So let's have a look. Let's go back a little bit further, a little bit further. We can see seven months and it looks like what I can assume here because it doesn't look like it was selling because uh, it was coming out and going back in. It almost looks like this was and we'll, we'll just check these out because we want to see what they are. But it looks like it was listed, delisted, listed, delisted, listed, delisted, and probably fighting the bots or, or, or just unsure, or who knows, or maybe it was a bot, who knows. It doesn't look like a bot. It looks like someone that's actually been using it. Um, but yet we can see marketplace here and then taken out of the marketplace, so this will be the same. Uh, this was a score program, so taken out of score, listed on the market. Or maybe... Maybe it's just an interaction. Maybe this isn't listing. Maybe this isn't listing because it looks like here this is. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe they're taking it out of score. I don't know. Maybe they're putting it back in. Who knows? But anyway, we can see seven months ago that happened. All right, let's go back even further. We're going to go back to the last 50 transactions. All right, so we can go back to the seven months ago to here, and this is where it entered the wallet. So this was the first time it entered the wallet and then left the wallet. So entering the wallet, let's have a look. There we go. We can see the transaction. So this again from the marketplace program, 7,200 plus some fees. It looks like approximately seven and a half thousand dollars. So somebody bought this for seven and a half thousand dollars. And then they put it into, I'm going to imagine that's going into the score program. Yep. So then it went into score. All right. So seven, so this account seven months ago bought this C9 for seven and a half thousand dollars. And now today they're selling it for 5,200. So they're going to take a loss on this. Okay. So it's possible by looking at that history that that's not a bot. It looks like that's someone that paid for it, used it, and is now selling it cheaper. And they want to make some money on it, so they're willing to sell it. Now here's the thing. They could quite simply accept this and sell it to this bot. Yeah, that's possible. And this bot is going to keep outpricing you all the way up. So let's have a look here, shall we? If I cancel this order that I've put in here, because let's say I want to buy this, but I don't want to pay the 5200 for it, right? I don't want to pay more than I need to. Now, I could go and buy this directly, and I did this the other day for a C9. But what I'm trying to do here is to ascertain whether you're buying from a real person or whether you're buying from a bot, and to show you the difference. And we'll look at a bot account in a minute, and you'll see the difference. So I just need to wait for them funds to, uh, and it will do this in real time, so you'll be able to see it. But there we go. So if I was to go in here and say, uh, I've only got 4,700 in this account, but this is 400% above the best price, because look, that one's now gone. They, that, that bot has removed. So what this is basically saying is without a bot on the marketplace, I'm paying 400% over the top. But because of this bot, and if, this, if these two bots are working together, then what this is basically saying is, hey, you know, you're only paying 50% above the best price. It's not as bad, right? As 400% above the best, which you could argue it's still 80 to 90% down from the um, original price. But is it worth the original price? It, are NFTs ever going to be worth their original price? We've seen like a 95% drawdown across projects and we've seen like a 90% drawdown in value across multiple projects. And so... Star Atlas is not the same project it was when it launched. There was a lot of hype. It was in a very different time. They had a lot of different things going on. They've lost most of their staff. They've lost most of their runway. They've lost the market sentiment. You know, there's a lot of things that have changed. And so that valuation at the start, holding on to that hopium and that copium because you bought at the top, isn't necessarily indicative of the value moving forward. What I don't want to do is pay $4,700 for a ship right now, thinking it's good value because of what it was originally, when the reality is in two years' time, this is going to be worth $1,000. Nobody wants to do that. People did it before when they paid twenty grand for this ship. People feel really bad now that they've lost 75, 80, 90% of their value. But what I don't want to see now is that happen again. And that this goes from 4,700 down to 1,000. So do I buy now or do I wait? 
well, if I buy it now, why am I buying it now? Am I going to use it? Am I going to get value from it? Am I going to be able to recover this money? Well, the reality is no, because all I can do is use it in Sage Labs, and Sage Labs isn't going to generate me enough revenue for the amount of work I have to put in for me, me to be able to get that money back. So I'm not going to make my money back um, on this. Not in the short term anyway. This is a long term thing. And the real value in this is if it's worth more. So my question right now is, am I buying a ship that's going to go up in value? Is it going to recover? Because this has already happened. And I'll give you a great example. I went and purchased the Fimble air bikes at just under $2 each. I think I paid like $1.95 for some of them. In fact, I've, I've overpaid for some ships, but let's just have a quick look um, at some of the air bikes that I bought, the older ones. So, oh, sorry, $2.22 here. So $2.22. Now, I only bought 10 of them, but that was nine months ago, and I paid $2.22. Now, Fimble air bikes right now are around 4 and a half to $5. So already, I'm 100% net positive on my investment here. These, these have gone up over over 100% in value. So this is where I'm going to make my money on these purchases, right? And the same thing can be said for things like food, like here. I bought a million food nine months ago, right? And I also bought um, another million food here. Now look at the price I paid, 0 0.0005. 0 0.0005. Let's just go and have a look in the marketplace at food right now. Okay, let's go and have a look at food in the marketplace. Go to resources. I'm just using this as an example to show you. All right, let's have a look at food. What is it currently? Um, what is a, a buy order? Because I can look at the set. See, already, already it's, it's 2x. So if I look at this, it was 0 0.05. It's now 0.15. But even the buy orders, look at these buy orders. It's, I, could make, I could make over 100% profit. Over 100% profit, almost, almost 200% profit right now if I was to sell this food. So buying that food in bulk and selling it now, I could actually have made a profit just simply by doing that. So this is really where it comes down to, are ships actually the best thing to be buying? Or would I be better just flipping resources? And this is where you need to know, are you buying high, selling low? Like, you know, what are you doing? Now, if we look at the price of things, and what they actually cost, and whether you're paying for them in Atlas or whatever, that makes a difference as well. So if I come back to what I want to do right now, so let's have a look at this um, this C9. Now I know that this person paid seven and a half thousand dollars for this, and they're trying to sell it now for five thousand two hundred. They want to get the most they can for it. What is this bot willing to pay? Well, if I create an order right now of let's say four thousand uh, four thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. Yep. Uh, and I understand this, and I put in this buy order at $4,725. All right, we do that now. Now, first of all, this 3100 is just going to disappear. Remember, BBJD. BBJD. Remember that, because you'll see it again in a minute. Now, one of two things is going to happen. That bot is either going to decide, Meh, that, that's too expensive, I'm not willing to pay that much, or that bot's going to go, yep, do you know what? I'm going to come in over the top of you, because I still think that's a good deal. So now this bot is kind of pricing me up to force me towards that mark. Now, if this was a legitimate sell offer and this person wanted to, to sell it, they might be like, oh, I want a quick sell. Maybe they need to liquidate. Maybe they need money. And in that instance, if that's true, they're going to be keeping an eye on this marketplace. They're going to be looking at these buy orders. And there we go. Look, this one's just gone at BBJD. Look, it's just come over the top by $1 by $1 extra. So before it was going above $10, $20, now it's just going above $1, all right? So it's getting close to its threshold, where if I keep going up a little bit more, eventually it's not gonna do it anymore. It's not. It's just gonna stop. So I have to decide, am I willing to pay 5,000 for this ship? Well, actually, no, I'm not. But I'm also, I'm not gonna get this ship for this amount of money if this is a real seller, because if they're gonna sell it, they're gonna sell it to the highest bidder, right? They're gonna, he's gonna, they're gonna delist it from here, and this will happen in a moment. They'll just they'll delist it from here, and they'll just sell it to the bot. Then what happens? Well, then the bot wants to sell it, right? So if they sell this for four thousand seven hundred, what happens? It goes back on the marketplace. How much for? Well, if they've just bought this for four thousand seven hundred, then they're probably gonna look to sell it for a similar price. They'll probably list it at the same five two, or maybe even five. And you might go, oh, wow, there was one for 5.2 the other day. Now there's one for five. 
and you think you're getting a good deal, but actually that £300 margin that they're making, that profit there, that is what the bot relies on. And so you have to really understand, like, is this a real person or is this a bot and is this a bot pushing you towards that bot? And it's very possible, very possible. So um, if this and if this bot gets you to buy here and then they do the same thing again, they because we can see, we know if we look at the history, we know that one sold here for 3,120. Who bought that? A bot. You can guarantee yourself it was a bot that bought that for 3,120, right? And that actually happened, uh, the la last one here was on the uh, the sale, I think, if this was the last one, was the 26. Okay, so we know that one sold for 3,120, but we know the bot bought it. So now we know that the bot's going to be trying to sell it to make a profit. And so that's why we need to understand, are these bots selling? Is it us buying? Is it, are we being forced up to buy, make that bot's price? Did that bot buy it for 3,100 and now they're selling it for 5,200, making a $2,000 profit on that sale? See, and that's why I'm going to remove this order here and now that one will just disappear back down and that will set, set itself back to whatever it was, like 3,100, I think it was. And that's it. So there you go, it's disappeared. It'll come back again. Um, and so you're not going to be able to get a good deal on a ship. Because here's the thing, if there's a sell order in it, there you go, set back to 3,100. Now, if you look at these bot accounts, and you can look across any of them, for example, look on the commander fleets. Look at this Jazzo. We know this is a bot account. They've got an $8,000 listing on this ship. They've got an $8,000 listing on this ship. And they've got an $8,000 listing on this ship. That's $24,000 just in those three orders there. Plus everything else which they've got orders on. And so there's nothing on the Titans, which I think makes sense because they're only one of ones and they're not going to be able to sell them. So, yeah, nothing on there. But if you look at all of these ships, uh, the two accounts, the Jazzo account, there's another 3,000 on there. This is an account, another 3,000 on there. You're probably going to find 3,000 across the mark. That's BBJD, so that's a different one. Maybe, I don't know, maybe these bots have got like a, a deal with each other where they don't, they don't shit on each other. Like, hey, if this bot's on that account, then leave it alone. You know, because they know the wallet addresses. So if this wallet is bid, then don't bid, bid on it because they're not going to fight each other. See, this one's Jazzo. So Jazzo's got some. It's it's almost like, you know, bot mafia, I guess. Like if they're not the same person, then maybe these are, maybe these guys are fighting over space. You know, maybe BBJD against Jazzo and, uh, you know, it's like a territory thing. I don't know. Who who knows? Who cares? At the end of the day, they're not real people. Well, they are. They're, 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 they're one or two people behind a bot. Um, but there, so you can see here, right? Even here, there's like 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 20, uh, 20, 30. There's like, like $50,000 in buy orders on bots alone. So they can outprice you on anything you want to buy. They could, they, could, they could easily drain all of these other accounts to, to fill up theirs. And, they've, and this is across every ship, by the way. Every single ship and resources and resources it's across, it's across the board. Oh, this is a different one. So is this a real... No, I don't think that's a real person. No, BBJD. So BBJD in there with 16. A 16... Okay. Okay. Uh, this is UH, uh, UHC. So, okay. Interesting to see there. I think I saw that somewhere else as well. Anyway, my point being that these bots uh, absolutely dominate this marketplace. And you're not going to get a good deal on this unless you... Um, it's impossible to know. You don't know whether this is good value or not. It's perceptually, the psychology is that it feels like good value because you're looking at the price of what it used to be compared to what the price it is now, and that feels like a good deal. And also because you're looking at the activity of what other people are buying and selling for. But none of it's real. The original price doesn't matter anymore except for people that bought it at that price. The price right now only matters in the future if it goes up or down. You want to buy it knowing it's going to go up. But if you buy it and it continues to go down, because look, over the last few years, it's gone down 90%. Now, you could argue, yeah, but we're in a bear market. What if we're not? What if this is reality? What if that before was hyperinflated because of all of the synthetic money from FTX and from Free Arrows Capital and from all of the other um, absolute degenerate gamblers that were just... Uh, leveraging 
insane amounts of VC money that wasn't even theirs and gambling it and getting wrecked and, and often in some cases sent to jail, which we're seeing continuously now through all of these influencers. What if that was just a bubble? And now we're coming down to what is going to be reality. And I, don't, I think we're still on copium right now. I don't even think we've hit reality yet. I think there's still such a large amount of copium that it's going to pick up. But what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't? And this, and I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm just trying to be realistic. What if these prices are still overinflated? Is Star Atlas going to be able to build a game economy that isn't destroyed by bots, given the fact that they've already clearly shown that they're either not interested in dealing with them or don't know how to? Once these take over the marketplace, is there going to be anything on the economy side of things that makes it valuable for people to play? Why are people going to play this game? Because at the moment, people are only playing this game because they think they're going to make money out of it. Is it going to be a fun game? Is there going to be a great story? Is it going to be a Star Citizen versus EVE Online versus Starfield versus, you know, or is it going to be its own entity? And if it is its own entity, is it going to be something that masses of people decide to play? Or is this just another statistic for the history books and we're just part of it? In that case, you have to make the decision, is it worth investing? Is it worth putting your money in? And right now, I can tell you, I am not interested in putting my money into these ships. Um, I, I even think if I was to buy at the $4,000 mark, which a lot of people would argue is just ridiculously cheap for this ship because of perception, I could still argue it's, over, it's overpriced. And whilst people are saying, but SDUs, they're not going to come down in value. Oh, but these ships, they're, they're only going to go up. Based on what? There's nothing to prove that they're going to go up in value. And so it's purely speculation. And that means it's a gamble. And so the question here is, are you willing to gamble that amount of money? Are you comfortable that when you press that buy order, that money's gone? Are you comfortable to be able to do that? Because that's really what it all comes down to here. And I'm hoping that's what this video helps you just a little bit to understand. And I'm really passionate about this because I don't want people to get wrecked. Obviously, you know, people for them to make money, that money has to come from somewhere. But I would like to see the money come from a more sustainable source like advertising revenue, corporate. Um, you know, we're seeing so much ad revenue right now through YouTube, Twitter and other things. Why not have ad revenue through games? It makes so much sense. Like there's advertisements all over games anyway. Why not just make them real people, you know? Uh, or real companies. Like, if we're spending so much time in this world anyway, it makes sense that we're we're putting those adverts in front of people and companies are paying for that. And then that can prop up the economy as opposed to, at the moment, the only way the economy is propped up right now is when people inject capital. And the only way people inject capital right now is after they've decided to fight the bots in the marketplace. Um, and, yeah, I just, I just want to bring this awareness to people. I'm not hating on the project. I love the project. I just think that... This is just a real issue that needs to be dealt with. And at the moment, there is just no sign of dealing with it. And so if you can't fix it, at least be aware of it. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.